let's talk about condominiums versus, versus HOAs. So a couple of things. Um, there's a lot of confusion out there amongst agents with uh, respect to, you know, what kind of disclosures are required for an HOA versus a condominium. And I did a training on condominium specifically. It's in Teachable. It'll be in Trainual. Highly recommend you watch it. Uh, but there are some key differences. But the first thing I would like um, to point out to you is that many times, not every time, but many times a property may actually be in both. So you may have a property that is in a condominium and at the same time part of an HOA. Um, in some areas, you may have a property that is a condominium and part of multiple HOAs. For example, here in Sarasota, we have this area called Palmer Ranch. There are condominiums where you, you, know, you are a member of the condominium plus you're a member of an HOA and then plus you're a member of a larger master HOA. Same thing in Lakewood Ranch. So you want to make sure that you understand all of the associations that are involved. But let's just pretend um, or compare a property that's only a condominium versus a property that's only in an HOA. So there are some similarities and there are some stark differences. The first one obviously is with a condominium, you have a statutory right of rescission. And for resales, that is going to be three days from the time that all of the condominium documents have been received by the buyer. And um, if the buyer received those documents three days prior to signing the contract, then you can indicate so on the rider, of course, and there would be no right of rescission. Now, very, very important is that you have the entire list of documents and that they're up to date. So a big problem that we see is that agents receive partial documents and they tell their buyer to sign the rider, sign the receipt of the documents. And now, you know, three day right of rescission starts, but the buyer really didn't get all of the documents and that can lead to a lawsuit. So you want to make sure that you as an agent, number one, know all of the required documents and that you make sure that they're all current. So um, if an owner bought the unit five years ago, and they're going to provide you with the package they received when they bought it. Those are not the current documents. There may have been amendments to the rules and regs. There may have been changes. There may have been amendments to the articles of, of, um, uh, of incorporation of the condominium. Um, the, um, the, 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 uh, the financials obviously will have changed. So you want to make sure that you have an up-to-date set of documents and many times sellers are just, you know, don't want to spend $100 or $200 to get a full package from their association, but I would demand it. And personally, if you list the condominium, I would ask at that point that the seller get a complete brand new package, a full package from the association and obviously pay for it. It's the seller's responsibility to provide these documents and have everything in place. And then that way you can actually provide it even early so that you may have a buyer that received it three days in advance. Imagine somebody scheduling a showing and number one, you have all of the documents uploaded to the MLS. Number two, you can email them to the agent that is doing the showing so they can pass it on to the buyer and then the buyer could have it three days ahead of time. Now, the um, uh, condominium association disclosure requirements are very, very specific with respect to what has to be provided. On an HOA, by contrast, there is no requirement to provide documentation whatsoever. The only requirement that exists is the requirement to disclose that there is an association, the name of the association and the management company, and what the dues are. That's it. So it's buyer beware to decide whether or not the rules and regs are going to be uh, a problem. For example, an HOA may have a rule that dictates um, what colors the homes can be, whether or not that can be a fence, whether or not you can park a pickup truck in the driveway or have a boat in the driveway. So if a buyer buys a home and then discovers post-closing that they can't park their boat in the driveway, that's just tough luck, provided that the disclosure was given. So as a buyer agent, obviously, it's a good idea to try and get a copy of the HOA documents, at least the rules and regs, but there's no legal requirement to disclose those things. So it's totally up to the buyer, but the buyer has to uh, basically sign off on the uh, HOA disclosure so they got noticed that this is 
a property in a homeowners association, that there are deed restrictions, that there are fees uh, involved with this. Um, now under Florida law, when a HOA disclosure is given at the time of the contract, so if it's part of the contract, there is no right of rescission. So unlike with a condominium where, you know, the disclosure is signed, but it basically says there's a three-day right of rescission from the time that all the documents are received and when the documents are received, the, the clock starts. With an HOA, there's no requirement to give documents and there's no right of rescission unless no disclosure is given. We had a transaction recently, for example, where the listing agent did not disclose that there's an HOA. There was no HOA disclosure provided to the buyer. And the buyer found out a few days prior to closing through the title company that there is an HOA. Now that buyer at that time could have canceled and voided the contract. You have a three day right of rescission up until the day of closing if an HOA disclosure is not provided at the time the contract is executed. Now going back to the initial statement that condos may have an HOA, if you have a condominium and the condominium disclosure documents were provided and the three day right of rescission runs out, but the agent never provided an HOA disclosure and that HOA disclosure is provided later on or it's later discovered that there is an HOA that has an additional $50 a month or a quarter dues, whatever it might be, then that buyer has a three day right of rescission from the moment they receive that disclosure. So just make sure that all of those disclosures are being provided on a timely basis. Now let's talk about one other fundamental difference between HOAs and condominiums. So in an HOA, you're buying a single family residence, generally speaking, unless it's a condo that's in an HOA, but generally speaking, you're dealing with, with homes, with properties. And of course, the entire property, the entire dwelling is a responsibility of the uh, owner. Now with a condominium, you're only buying the airspace inside of the, the, the property inside of the condominium. So only the space inside of the walls is what you purchase when you purchase a condominium. And so that means who's responsible for defects. Um, if there is a defect with wiring inside of the wall, it's the association's responsibility. If there is a leak, a pipe leak inside of the walls, it's the association's responsibility. If there's a roof leak that causes other damages, it's the association's responsibility. If there is a storm and it damages the balcony, it's the association's responsibility. So anything that is outside of the airspace is the association's responsibility with one exception, and that would be your air conditioner air handler. So your AC air handler sits outside of the wall, outside of the building, that's still your responsibility as the condominium owner. But everything else becomes the association's responsibility or another unit owner's responsibility. Let's say, for example, the person above you has their bathtub overflowing and it causes water damage, it drips down through their floor, through your ceiling, creating water damage at your ceiling. It is the uh, responsibility of the owner of the unit above you. It's not the responsibility of the association because it's not something, it's not a defect that took place inside of the walls or outside of your airspace that is owned and the responsibility of the association. So very, very important. And two things to look out for when you deal with condominiums is number one, what are their reserves? Because if their roof is 20 years old and there are no reserves, then you know for a fact there's going to be a special assessment to pay for this new roof. Good associations have repair reserves, maintenance reserves, that match up to the age of the various improvements that have to be made. So that's one of the things you want to look out for. Um, how old is the roof in the, uh, at the condominium and uh, you know, how long has it been since it has been painted? Is the building in disarray? Will it need to be repainted? Is there damage to the siding versus what is um, the reserve? You know, many associations are very poorly run in the sense that all the owners say, oh, we want to pay as little as possible, we want to pay as little as possible. It's a brand new condominium. Um, so there are no setbacks for reserves for repairs. And of course, that is going to come to bite you later when repairs are required and special assessments are made. If you have a buyer or a seller and there is a damage to the unit that is caused by the association, let's say, for example, there's a leak 
in the wall of a plumbing leak that caused water, damage to the drywall, and mold. Those are all things that are the responsibility of the association. And if the association is fiscally sound, they need to and can address it. And so this is not something that a seller or buyer needs to really freak out about it because again, it is the responsibility of the association. And you wanna make sure that the association is put on notice. And uh, virtually every well-run association is going to respond very rapidly to, um, to any of those issues. So just a couple of pointers regarding associations, condominiums versus HOA. And um, I hope you're having an amazing week. Thank you so much for tuning in and I'll talk to you again next week. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.